Here we go, the 91st and 92nd country, Albania and Montenegro. So I went to Albania Elbasan from Macedonia overland and then after arriving at Elbasan minibus station I was waiting for my bus heading to the southern Albania Saranda. And while I was waiting, I saw local men were fighting, you know, I felt afraid, um, but this is like a very typically Albanian character. And before I bought on my vehicle heading to the south, I grabbed some food. Um, it was like um, egg, fried egg with sausage and rice, it suited my Chinese stomach. But actually, Albanian people eat uh, a lot of meat. And on the first night in Saranda, I stayed in the hostel. It was located uh, somewhere you need to climb a lot of stairs, you know, with my luggage, I feel like so tiring. And the second day, I moved to my couching, couch surfing house place. Uh, my host was a local tour guide, and he offered me a single room equipped with the uh, independent shower. Um, and my host got a pair of, of blue eyes and then took me to the local site and then the blue eyes spring. So he drove around and I ate petrol in his car and then he was there to guide me. Then we went to a castle uh, on a mountain top for sunset. Now I also see like local people were holding weddings over there. Um, and then I get to see the whole surrender view uh, from the top. And I also cooked the Chinese food for my house back to um, home. Um, the next day I went outside seeing myself. So I took a bus to Kasamir Beach for Sanspa. Um, after a few days in Saranda, I went to Verat. The right so called southern windows town. I went there to enjoy the ancient view. Uh, so, like, I followed the old track and climbed up to Berat Castle. There were like mountains and forests around uh, if you feel just so peace. And actually, one of my uh, travel mates I met in in Georgia in, on the same time during my stay in Albania he was there too so he he actually invited me to do hiking in the northern Albania but I while I was in Barat uh, I just feel I want to chill so I didn't join him instead I stay and the rest a uh, few days in Barat and after Barat I took a public transport to Shkota and I stayed in one night in the hostel. Um, the second day I made my way to Montenegro. So on the bus journey heading to Montenegro, there's a German girl sat next to me. So we had a conversation. She told me she stayed in a small city where Germany, Switzerland and France shared the border. And she doesn't spend any money on food. Instead, she does dumpster diving for food. Um, and we were both heading to Budva on that day, and she was there for camping. And then I went there to do couch surfing for my stay. Um, my host was a Turkish, and he lives in Budva city, and he got a Turkish room flatmate. So actually on my arrived day in Budva, my host actually invited me for dinner with two former couch surfers he hosted, which were two French girls. But I didn't join them since my stomach is not as open-minded as myself. So I'm not very much into Western food. Um, so he offered me his room to use. And since his flatmates were also like hosts from Capsaphine, so they were hosting people on the same time during my stay there. So every day you would get to see new guests coming. It's kind of just like a hostel. Like the second day, two Turkish girls came, and third day, two Chilean girls came, and last day, a Japanese girl came. Um, also, my house is a party animal, and Budova is just a party paradise. But I didn't join him since I'm not a party girl. 
So during the day, I went out to do sightseeing myself. So I went to Kotor from Budzava for a day tour. So I climbed up to the castle peak, get to see the Kotor Bay. It was very lovely. And down to the old town, walking around, get to see some traditional dancing performers. I also I did like a day tour in Budva and um, you know in Budva you will get to see walking beginners everywhere because you know people were there to enjoy the beach and sun so I went to the jazz beach for sun spa and I met a belly dancer she was like very friendly she shared the music with me we enjoyed the, the sun together and on the same night I get to see the free classic music performance in Old Town and then I really enjoyed the violin artist from the UK named uh, Nigel Kennedy um, his music was so great and um, he also kissed my hand and the next, next night out I went to the night market with the belly dancer you know, in the night market, you will see they offering food and some other crap shop. And then, uh, it's very lovely to see night market in Europe because it's not as common as what what you will find in Asia. So, uh, even I'm not a party girl, but to me, Budva is both like a, a lively during the day and night even if you are not like a petty animal you will still find yourself fit in in the city and then um, i didn't expect like uh, montenegro is like uh, in this way but uh, i realized i really enjoy that and after budva i took a bus heading to dubrovnik but in my perception, I feel like uh, uh, in Budva, actually the cost of uh, uh, traveling, it's, uh, it's like uh, getting expensive. But actually, the most expensive one around the Balkan Sea should be Dubrovnik. So I will catch you up with the next coming episode that will be Cro- Croatia. Thank you very much for listening. Um, I will catch you up with the next episode. Uh, Once again, thank you very much for listening. Bye from now.